Well, I'll give you a little, a little song and dance on ornaments with you. Ornaments and elements come, there's 13 elements in the middle of the periodic table down here. They go from mercury, gold, platinum, iridium, osmium, ruthenium, modium, palladium, silver, and copper, nickel, and, and cobalt. They have an ability to change their structure and lose their electrons, and they become chemically inert. So a typical atom of gold, which normally has an atomic weight of 196, when it loses its electrons, the outer electrons, get, they, form, they combine and form Cooper pairs, they become whirlwinds of light, they, they shrink down in size, and so let's say you had a, a typical element that was the size of a, a tennis okay. ball, it'll shrink down to about the size of a jelly bean. All its elect outer electrons move, and then the, the shielding is prevent, and everything gets pressed down. And because the, the, the outer electrons become whirlwinds of light, it's speeding at the rolling at the speed of light, so they get high spin nucleus. The nucleus becomes a high spin, shrinks down to a size of a jelly bean, comes chemically inert, and actually is equivalent to one of the inert gases. See, in the periodic table over here, you have the no normal inert gases from neon down to krypton and radon. Gold, which normally is 196 molecular weight, because of its develops its diamagnetic field, levitates four ninths of its weight on the Earth's magnetic field. It becomes equivalent to a 109 molecular weight, which is between xenon and krypton. So it's an inert gas, and it belongs over in this part of the periodic table. We have to change the periodic table to make room for these elements in here. But we know they're over here. I know, and my understanding is, if you look at the, go to the Handbook of Physics and Chemistry and look at the boiling range, boiling point of xenon, it's not a point, it's a range. It's up, uh, it has plus or minus three degrees centigrade boiling range for a xenon. And xenon's a single element, it should have one boiling point. The reason it's different is because it absorbs and reacts and combines with these different inert gases here, and they form what I call Asiotropes. An asiotrope is two, two elements, you're getting a group right? two elements that combine in a liquid state that do not separate on boiling. So they combine, that's going to change the molecular weight of this, and the boiling range is going to change. So that's why xenon is plus or minus three degrees centigrade because it, it forms asiotropes with some of these ormus elements, which are like gold, or platinum, or iridium. So, so, so the ormus elements then are formed from other elements. They are formed form from themselves when they lose their electrons. Gold metal becomes gold ormus, not from another material, but just it loses its electrons, change, changes its structure, changes its uh, um, a, equivalent atomic weight and its chemical activity completely disappears. All chemical activity is due to the outer electrons. If you lose your outer electrons, you lose your chemical activity, and they become inert gases. These things are, are inert because the outer electrons form a tight ring, and so they're not, they don't combine. And these don't combine because they have no outer electrons to start with. So, so, this, so the, the, the idea, it, it sounds like then, is since these ormus elements, like since many of them might be potentially gases, right. but, but by restoring them to their normal state, uh, you, you could recreate Convert those Convert back into the metal. But see, so they're in the gas form, so they're in everything. They're, they're, you hear these things, they have a diamagnetic field, so that means that they have a, a magnetic component. You heard of the runners high, you heard of the mountain climbers high, or you heard of the yogi sit there and breathe uniformly, get this, they're bringing in this magnetic energy, it's energizing their soul and their spirit, and they go into, out here it's manana, which is tomorrow, so they're in, you're getting goosebumps again, you tell an absolute truth, you get it. And they, they get, it brings magnetic energy into the body, and the spirit is magnetic, so you're energizing the spirit with these breathing exercises. So it's in the air. And as a result, it's in the ground and it's in the water. These elements are in everything. David Hutton says, everything you breathe, everything you drink, everything you step on contains ormus elements. The tiny little jelly beans as compared to tennis ball, moving in and out of everything. But what is unique about them is they find a crystal structure like quartz that's in here. Quartz has a crystal structure, has uniform magnetic and electric fields in there. 
they go in there and they, they find like a little energy nest and they stay in there. Whether it's quartz or magnetite or hematite or, or zeolite, all these different crystal materials contain these hormones elements. And they're in there for a while and then they go out. But while they're in there, if we put those things, a beetle bottle or something into it and heat it up and get it in a liquid glass, well, it's in the glass form and we, we heat it with the microwave, we stir these things apart, we release electrons. Those electrons are able to be picked up by the orbis and they can reconstitute them from the orbis element, chemically inert, to a metallic state. So and in a sense, it's almost like dehydrating an atom, except well, instead of moving yeah, your water. You're, doing, you're taking part of it, you're building it back in. You're taking it from a chemically inert, we add electrons back to it, it becomes a metal, and once it becomes a metal, they become metal, and we are able to extract them with a normal assay process. This is these are particles of gold we got out of beer bottles. It represents about one part in 75 of the beer bottle is gold and silver. And here is rhodium and iridium coming out of black sand. Uh, this is out of a container glass. And this is gold that grew in the air on chunks of magnetite that had homeless elements behind it. So we can, we're capturing this, these precious elements by different techniques, and, and it's in everything. And so my idea with the microwave is that we could do something to bring energy to these systems, release electrons, and, and get this. And one of, one of my reports talk about for the black sand, we could show that we could get spheres of rhodium and iridium out of black sand, because they're in there with, black sand is so chemically inert. If you, but if, if you dissolve, try to dissolve it in hot glass, which is standard, standard assay procedure, like we have here, and it's, it's so inert that so you have to grind it extremely fine and only use a very small amount, and then you can dissolve it and break it up. And what we do is add additional electrons, we throw in graphite and carbon, and the graphite is a crystal structure. All fl crystals have uh, free electrons on the edges. The graphite is all flakes and layers. So if you put graphite in, these, in this hot melt, it adds extra electrons. So it's another way of adding electrons. Besides the stirring action of the microwave, which tears atoms apart and releases electrons, we add stuff into it, into the mix, to make it happen better. And that's what we've developed in this whole process. It was first discovered when I voted my little DVD, first one called Growing Gold. This DVD gives an understanding of the Ormus concept, what I was just talking about, and the process that we use to convert them. Now, with, with the DVD and the other materials that you brought to the conference, um, is there some place that people could visit online to, to purchase those or to learn more? No, well, you can take my business card here and my email. My email is JV Maluski. My initial is John Vincent, JV Maluski, at AOL.com. And there's a, I don't have a website which I sell from. I would have an email, you could talk to me and tell me you want to get into the act on this. Right now, if you look on this table, these are the type of units that we're selling to do the assaying, melting, and smelting. And that's what I took on Thursday. I was here, spent two hours talking about how, with a typical microwave, kitchen-type microwave, you can melt and smelt and assay and cupel precious elements with not very expensive equipment. So it's, it's JV Maluski at AOL.com. AOL Wonderful. Good. So one of the Steve. questions I had, John, is that if the boromus elements are uh, bound or, or in the same mix as the inert elements, inert gases. Yeah, they, they form what they call azeotrope solutions. They're, they're mutually soluble in each other. If you Do you think if you took, for example, a xenon tube or a krypton tube and, and put it in some environment like a magnetite environment, it might increase the amount of warmest elements collected by the magnetite? No, I don't think so. I think it's only it's only what's in here. But you know, if you go down the hall here, you see a guy with some. You go in his room. He says healing by light. Right, right. Well, he's got hundreds of little tubes, all full of different gases. He's ionizing, and I think that half of the power of that healing that comes from that is that he's got gases that are not just chemically inert like krypton and xenon and neon, but they're they're 
combined with Hormuz elements, which have a diamagnetic component. So in addition to light, they're getting magnetic energy. And all healing takes place in the spirit. The spirit is magnetic energy. So you energize the spirit, you energize the healing. Okay, good. John, why don't you talk for a minute while well, he's got the camera on you about your magnetite water? Oh yeah, what it is, I, you see over that disc there's a pile of <coughs> magnetite in there, and, I, and what magnetite or, or is? Black sand. Magnet, yeah, black sand. But those, those black sand in Hawaii, but that's just black lava. This is black sand that's magnet. Regular black sand is magnetite, and magnetite is Fe three O four, and it has it's. It is not a magnet, but it's a high, one of the most magnetic intense material. It's a magnetic susceptor and concentrates, the way it works, it concentrates the earth magnet. Assume, look at this here. Assume that this open void structure here, there's all magnetite around here, and this is a tube here. Now we stick a bottle of water in here, and it gets energized because the magnetic energy, what magnetite does, it concentrates the earth's magnetic field. You take that, your, your magnetometer, you measure it out here, let's say it's a half a gauss, 0.4 or something like that. You measure it in there, it's about two and a half to three. So it's five to ten times stronger. So the magnetic energy of the Earth gets concentrated when you surround it with magnetite. Because magnetite just has a collector. It collects it, and since it's in a cylinder, you get a vortex effect. The Earth is rotating, there's a little whirlwind of magnetic energy in there. And you put your bottle of water in there, it gets activated and you drink that stuff. It's what I call Starbucks for the soul. Because the spirit is magnetic, you're getting to drink it, drinking and adding magnetic energy to the spirit. Is that your boss? And, 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 and John, you, you do this about five uh, different days. bottles, four days. Oh, yeah. You have six bottles, minimum six bottles, mm -hmm. and you leave them in there for three days. So every day you can take two bottles of three-day water okay. and drink that stuff. And if you look at this picture here of me, I was losing my hair in 06. Now look, I got a lot more of it. I hadn't lost any more, you know, and I was getting bald on the top. And so I'm 83 years old. I'm still in pretty good shape. Yeah, you're in good shape. Uh, I'm not an Olympic champion. Speak maybe, well and everything. Maybe in night problems. But, yeah, so, but uh, I, I'm doing okay. You know, I have a little more So, so I, I know that you, in the last conference, they, you and the, somebody who came with you spoke about your work with perhaps one of the labs, uh, maybe Ascendia Labs or one of the other <coughs> labs where maybe you were trying to do some uh, resonant um, uh, frequencies that would uh, align with the elements. Uh, no, uh, whatever people have suggested, says, you know, Gold has a, a, a nuclear frequency of 1.725 hertz, I mean megahertz, million, one, point, one million points, yeah. And they, they say, gee, we have microwave is 2.5 gigahertz. Maybe can you modulate that frequency with a carrier wave, use that as a carrier wave to carry in the frequency of gold or platinum or rhodium or rhodium. Oh, we get a good crystal oscillator that's on those things. Anyone with a radio that knows how to modulate radio waves, or any kind of waves could do that, I think would make my microwave more effective, more efficient. And so that's something we got to get somebody to spend money to build me a microwave that will do that. <laughs> there are a number of people that, uh, in my search on the internet, have, who have looked at resonating frequencies on gold oh, yeah. and being able to take uh, ore samples and then put them in at this resonant frequency and then vaporize the, the gold and then collect it. Yeah, yeah. some people, yeah, there's different ways. People not only work with microwaves, like people with, with plasmas and also uh, uh, lasers. When you get it high enough and produce free electrons, then the conversion takes place. Well, I'll give you a little, a little song and dance on Ormus material. Ormus elements come, there's 13 elements in the middle of the periodic table down here. They go from mercury, gold, platinum, iridium, osmium, ruthenium, rhodium, palladium, silver, and copper, nickel, and, and cobalt. They have elements of light. They, they shrink down in size. And so let's say you had a, a typical element that was the size of a, a tennis ball. It'll shrink down to about the size of a jelly bean. 
all this elect out electrons move, and then the, the shielding is from a dent, and everything gets pressed down, and because the the out electron become whirlwinds of light, it's speeding ability to change their structure and lose their electrons, and they become chemically inert. So a typical atom of gold, which normally has an atomic weight of 196, when it loses its electrons, the outer electrons, get, but they, form, they combine and form Cooper pairs. They become world molecular weight because of its develops its diamagnetic field, levitates four ninths of its weight on the Earth's magnetic field. It becomes equivalent to a 109 molecular weight, which is between xenon and krypton. So it's an inert gas, and it belongs over in this part of the periodic table. We have to change the periodic table to make room for these elements. Get this rolling at the speed of light, so they get high spin nucleus. The nucleus becomes a high spin, shrinks down to a size of a jelly bean, comes chemically inert, and actually is equivalent to one of the inert gases. See, in the periodic table over here, you have the no normal inert gases from neon down to krypton and radon. Gold, which normally is 196.